Hey there, St. Paul family and whoever else happens to be watching. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And what a change it was from the last video that I recorded. It is Tuesday when I'm recording this and it is over 60 degrees outside and, and sunny and the warmth feels amazing. Thank you for watching this day, or weekly video devotion. During this Lenten season, we're taking an in-depth look at Psalm 51. Uh, every week this Lent, we're going to take a look at a word or a phrase that comes out of Psalm 51. And so I encourage you to go ahead and open up your Bibles to Psalm 51 and read it again out loud. There are so many treasures to mine from the depths of this psalm that it was hard to pick just six words or phrases to concentrate on. But I want to, as we start off this devotion, to review the story of David and Bathsheba. What got David into trouble in the first place, since I didn't cover that in the first video last week. David was the king of Israel, a mighty king known for his success in battle. But David was getting a little bit older, and so he didn't always go out with his army to fight in battles. And, and this time he was home at his palace, and his, his wandering eye got him in trouble. He happened to see uh, a young woman, Bathsheba, as she was bathing, and he thought, hey, uh, she looks pretty good. I think I'd like to have her. And so he compelled her as the king to come to him. He committed adultery with her. And when Bathsheba told him later on that she was pregnant, David tried to cover it up. He invited Uriah, her husband, back from battle and, and sent him home uh, so that he could be with his wife and he would think that the child actually belonged to him. But Uriah refused to go back home saying he would not uh, enjoy the comforts of home if his fellow soldiers were also not allowed to do so. So David had to uh, come up with another plan, and it was a, a devious one. He conspired with Joab, his general, to, to have Uriah killed on the battlefield. As, as people pulled away from Uriah, he was struck down. David thought uh, that was the end of it, and he took Bathsheba in as his wife. But of course, God knew and God sent Nathan the prophet to confront David about his, his selfishness, his adultery, and the murder that he committed. You are the man. You have done wrong, Nathan told David. And David broke down and wept and begged for mercy and penned the words of Psalm 51. This story should shock us. After all, this is David we're talking about. David who defeated Goliath and trusted God. David who is described as a man after God's own heart. And here he is engaging in adultery and, and murder and trying to cover it up. This is not God's way. Before we think, well, at least I'm not like David. We should hold on. Because you and I have at least two things in common with David. And the first is that we, like David, are moral failures and sinners. No, you may not have committed adultery or murder. But that doesn't mean that there are not adulterous and, and hateful thoughts in your heart and uh, that have led to uh, selfish actions. We too are sinners. And the second thing that you and I have in common with David is that our only hope is in God's steadfast love and his abundant mercy. And those are our words of the day, which come from verse 1 of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. 
Psalm 51 provides an opportunity for us to be honest in a a self-assessment about our own lives and our own sin as well. We are flawed human beings, but we don't have to, to beat ourselves up over it. We don't have to to deny it or or minimize it and say it's not a big deal or even defend ourselves and say, but what about the good things that I've done? And we also, we don't have to be paralyzed by regret or despair. We can stare our deepest, darkest failures in the face and be unafraid, unafraid of what God will do to us because our hope in this life is not in the the purity of our actions or the perfection of our performance. Our hope is in a God of steadfast love and abundant mercy who has revealed himself to be such a God, most especially in the person and work of Jesus Christ, David's hope and yours. For our time of reflection, I want you to consider these questions. Are there places where your life still portrays an unhealthy fear of God's anger and judgment over your sin? Do you ever doubt that he could love, ever love a person like you? Go ahead and pause the video and answer that question. Uh, Have a discussion about it if you're in a group. And let's take those fears and those doubts to God in prayer at this time. Lord God, I am a sinner. Through your law, reveal my sinfulness to me so that I can see myself honestly and confess my sin to you. But through the good news of Jesus, Reveal to me again and again your steadfast love and abundant mercy, which washes away my sin and creates in me a clean heart. I thank and praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. There are no shortage of songs made containing the words of Psalm 51, and so we're going to highlight a number of those in the next few weeks. Uh, The first one is kind of a throwback to a guy uh, named Keith Green. He was big in the uh, 70s and 80s, a Christian singer, and he has one called Create in Me a Clean Heart. And I I just discovered it, and uh, to my great surprise and delight, it's to the same tune that uh, we Lutherans are used to singing this create in me a clean heart so click the link before the uh, below this video uh, give that song a listen and sing along to it as well until next time god's grace and peace his steadfast love and abundant mercy be yours